So what I'm going to discuss today involves looking at ecology at the broadest of scales and actually in the smallest of scales in the fossil record. Um, just to begin, I'm uh, Conrad Labandera. I'm in the Department of Paleobiology. Um, I am the curator of fossil arthropods, and I joined the museum in 1992. So the Eocene Messel deposit is an amazing place. It, it's a 48-million-year-old um, uh, deposit that was um, deposited in, in central east Germany, or western Germany, and it consists of one of the most exceptionally preserved deposits in all of the fossil record. And just to give you an idea of what this entails, we have up here on the board, we have beetles uh, with pollen in their guts. And you'll see throughout this talk, at least the beginning part of it, that there's a lot that's involved in constructing uh, trophic relationships among organisms. Um, we have an example of cannibalism in the center left. Um, and then we have all of these um, um, organisms from bacteria to plants to insects to fungi to various groups of vertebrates um, and, uh, and all of their intricate relationships, such as uh, gut contents. In the case of the woodpecker, we have seeds in its gut. We have an amazing example of dentition in the lower left. And in that uh, organism, uh, uh, we have um, seeds and fish fragments. Many of these vertebrates are extinct, but in the case of the insects, they're still around. A lot of these groups um, are no longer occur at the, at the higher lineages. Uh, we have, in the, in the case of the hedgehog at the upper left, cuticle of a beetle, other kinds of insect contents, bacteria, another kind of hedgehog-like organism at the left, fish rays, scales, um, and then we have a kind of a very primitive insectivore at the left with reptile bones, vertebral fragments, and that other kinds of interesting things in the guts. Um, and we can have uh, an example of carnivory at the upper right. Um, and then all kinds of intricate insect-plant relationships, such as seed predation, leaf mines, oviposition, um, and even uh, in the case of uh, bats, um, moth scales in their guts as well. So there's a lot of trophic information. So one of these um, interesting associations involves the bees. And at the left, we have um, a, an extinct tribe of apine bees, uh, very closely related to honeybees today, um, and, thing, and also related to stingless bees and bumblebees and other kinds of related bees. And if you note, you, the, there are little ellipses um, on the bodies of these things, and those little dots in those ellipses represent pollen. Um, and then in the lower left, we have a leg, and that's a pollen basket but that also has pollen in it, those little orange dots, which some of which are illustrated on the right. So what we did is that we looked at the bodies of these insects, and we found out that um, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen in the yellow, blue, and green contain a broad spectrum of pollen that represents the ambient forest. So these bees were foraging on flowers and collecting the material as they foraged and offering a pollination service to the flower. But the legs in orange contain a completely different suite of pollen. And their pollen was restricted just to a few families of plants, such as the mallows and the spurges. And that pollen contained, um, represented flowers that are very stereotyped and contain a very particular type of floral design. And that was the pollen that was basically going back to the nest to basically provide for food for the larvae. So here we have a dual co um, collection strategy, generalist on one hand and specialist on the other hand, for two different types of functions. So this demonstrates that at least midway in the history of bees that began in the in probably sometime in the uh, early to late Cretaceous boundary, we already have evidence for this, these, this dual pollen collection strategy, specialist on one hand and then generalist on the other. So um, I realize it's only a week after Halloween, but in the upper left we have um, modern day zombies. Um, that's uh, the Night of the Living Dead. I'm sure all of you are familiar with that. Um, but it turns out that in the fossil record, we also have examples of zombies, except they're ants. Um, and how do we know? Well, we have this very interesting leaf um, at the top um, with very distinctive uh, death grip marks. 
Um, that actually corresponds to damage type 212 in my compendium. Um, and uh, this was created by an ant. The ones in the lower left are modern. And if you notice, issuing out of their head is a stroma. With a, it's a fungal fructification. And this um, ghoulish contraption actually represents how a fungus a hypha can actually uh, enter the head capsule and actually immobilize um, the ant to do its own bidding. And so the ant actually crawls underneath the leaf and dies as the fungus re reproduces. So here we have an example of a really interesting interaction at three trophic levels. And it was also reported on The Simpsons. <laughs> Didn't make it to science. Um, but nonetheless, the, the, uh, the, uh, the meso has a lot of really interesting associations that are no longer around today, such as these three. So here's the food web, uh, 700 species, 6,444 links, and a connectance of 0 0.13. It's very diverse. It's very highly resolved. Um, and if we plot it with modern food webs, um, there are two variables, the number of species and the fractions of links that are predicted. That's where it occurs. But if we, because it's way out in the, in the uh, outlier, if we degrade it to 100 species, it occurs there. And then we have the Weddell Sea Lab web, which is kind of strange because there aren't that many primary producers. So what this says is that, is that, um, excuse me, is that modern webs are highly unresolved and that sometimes we have to go to the fossil record to really get a really good web so that it can be compared to modern webs. And in the case of the Meso, we have one of the best webs ever known. Thank you. Question for Conrad. Um, what is the quality of, of the neurological tissue in some of these Meso fossils? It's an incredible preservation, but recently there, there's been uh, news about arthropod preservation uh, back into the Cambrian of neurological tissue. So I'm just curious about that in your your specimens. Yeah, thanks for that question, Kay. Um, it's a, it is quite remarkable. Um, we get, we do get tissue preservation in some of these mesal, um, especially in the vertebrate and the in insect material. Um, it doesn't quite approach that of amber, but you can see, uh, for example, Z rings on some of the muscle, and uh, you can see individual fibers, and they seem to be permineralized. So you can see the three-dimensional structure of the muscles of, uh, especially insect flight muscle is probably the best example. But um, in case of uh, plant tissues, you can make out things like parenchyma um, and other uh, epidermal layers with individual cell walls, although the protoplast seemed not to be preserved. So it is quite spectacular, and it's probably about uh, one of the best examples in the compression fossil record that you see of this kind of preservation. 